up, everybody, and welcome to The Horror Within Me, a podcast dedicated to the world of horror. I am your host, Eric, and each week I'm going to rate and review a new movie or TV show that falls within the horror genre. Now, this is a show for horror fans, hosted by a horror fan, who's just here to share my opinions and experiences with my fellow horror friends in hopes that you may gain something new to watch or not watch, and really just talk about all things related to this beautifully dark and spooky world that we call horror. So if this sounds like a show for you, stick around, we're going to have a lot of fun. So let's get started. What's up everybody and welcome back to another Spooky Sunday episode of The Horror Within Me. I am your host Eric and this is a podcast where we do horror movie reviews and other things. Welcome, if this is your first time listening, thank you for joining. If you are a returning listener... Thank you for coming back. We really appreciate it. When I say we, I mean me and all my multiple personalities. I'm so excited. I want to start off this week's episode by announcing that my birthday was on the 15th. So yay, happy birthday to me. It was an amazing birthday and I got a really a bunch of amazing stuff from my friends and family and my husband. All horror things. If you want to see what I got, it's so much to, to name, just head on over to my TikTok. Um, at the horror within me to see, I made a little video about it. So go check it out. But one of the things that I want to highlight that I got was the complete number in Elm street, Blu-ray collection. I've been wanting that for a long time and I'm super excited that I got that. And another thing that I got was the scream Funko game that um, me, Ryan and Jenny played last night. And it is super, super fun. So if you're into scream, you're into card games and games with friends, Definitely go check it out. Um, I think they sell it on Amazon is where he got it. But I really want to talk about this week's episode because it's such a fun episode. I say that every week, but I'm very excited about this one because it is all about the original 1974, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So if you're listening to this on this Sunday, which is the 20th, I'm calling it Texas Chainsaw Weekend because... <laughs> The original Texas Chainsaw movie takes place on August 18th, 1974. But not only that, it's a Texas Chainsaw Weekend because this this August 18th, 2023, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the game is released or was released. Now, if you're listening to this episode, I already have mine pre-ordered and will be playing it as soon as I freaking can. It looks amazing. I've watched some Twitch streamers play it. Watch a couple things from Gun Media. The creators do things on it. And it just looks super amazing. And in honor of the game, in honor of this week's episode, I went back because I never actually saw all of the Texas Chainsaw movies. The first one that I saw was the 2003 remake, which is a podcast episode I've done previously. And then um, I saw the original one time, which is strange. I saw the Texas Chainsaw The Next Generation, which is one of my favorite ones. And then the beginning. So I never saw Texas Chainsaw 2 or Texas Chainsaw 3, but I've heard really, you know, different things about it. And as a fan of the franchise and of Leatherface and just as a whole, I wanted to go back and watch Texas Chainsaw 2 and Texas Chainsaw 3. So I have been off the whole week from my birthday doing a little bit of a reset. And what I've done is just watch a ton of old movies I want to catch up on. So one of them was finishing the series for the Texas Chainsaw. The other one was actually watching the Evil Dead series, which I finished those as well. Evil Dead, Evil Dead 2, and Army of Darkness. I've already seen the Evil Dead remake and Evil Dead Rise. Now, I may or may not watch the Ash vs. Evil Dead television show. We'll see. Another thing for Texas Chainsaw that I have. Now, if you're watching this episode on YouTube, you can see behind me over here. Wrong way. Over here. Where am I pointing? <laughs> here uh, is my Trick or Treat Studios Leatherface mask, which is from the 1974 uh, Texas Chainsaw. He's here to join me on this week's episode. So really nicely done mask. I wanted a leather face mask for my mask collection because my tops obviously are Freddy Krueger, Michael Myers, Leatherface, Ghostface, Jason Voorhees. Love them. So I have a Jason mask. I have a Freddy mask. And now I have a leather face mask and a ghost face mask. And then obviously I'm collecting all of the different Michael Myers masks because there's just so many, but I'm very excited about it. Looks really good. I'm Super happy with it. I'm going to be ordering a plaque just like I do with all my other masks to be getting shipped. But for now, he's just stuffed with a bunch of bags to keep the shape of the of the mask. Because I've read that's a good way to keep it uh keep its shape and not to use styrofoam. 
so, so many people have said not to use styrofoam heads on on latex masks because it dries them out. So I'm just going to avoid it to till I can get a stand and just use some disposable plastic bags that may or may not be not something you should have in New Jersey. <laughs> um, so yeah, I went back because I've only seen the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre one time. I went back and watched it again for this episode because I thought it was a perfect way. We're, we're coming up on in October. It's going to be 49 years since the original was released almost 50 years ago with the game coming out, all the hype of the movie, everything happening. I definitely wanted to just do an original. Last week we did the original Friday the 13th. There's so many originals I haven't done. I haven't done Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. We've done Friday the 13th. It's time to do Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So we're going to dive in. Probably on the next episode, I'll be able to talk to you more about the game. I haven't played it yet by the before the you know it's not released when I'm recording this. So I haven't had a chance to play it, but I'm super excited and I'll let you know next week what I think about the game in the beginning of the episode. But let's talk about the movie. So you know what we do every week before we start on all the inf- interesting facts of who's in it, who released, when all that stuff. We're gonna do this week's terrifying trivia question. <music> This week's terrifying trivia question is directly from the film. Um, so if you've seen the film, which I'm guessing you have by this point, if not, it's not a big spoiler. But the question is, what does Kirk find on the farmhouse porch and gives to Pam? Stick around to the end of this episode to get the answer. <music> All right, so we head over to IMDb, and we're going to see what the synopsis is for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The synopsis is, five friends head out to rural Texas to visit the grave of a grandfather. On the way, they stumble across what appears to be a deserted house, only to discover something sinister within, something armed with a chainsaw. i am be very honest with you, not a fan of the synopsis of this for Texas Chainsaw. Um, started off okay. They could have changed the synopsis so much more. It just doesn't, it's just, it's doesn't, it's not exactly what is going on there. There's a whole other thing going on there. Like, so the five friends are heading to rural Texas to visit the f- grave of a grandfather because there was news on the radio that the cemetery he's buried in is full of, somebody is digging up graves and stealing corpses and, and pieces of corpses. They don't stumble across what to be appears to be a deserted house. I'm not sure why they keep saying this. They went to a deserted house that was owned by the father of Sally and Franklin, and they just they stumbled across the farmhouse, two of them, looking for gas, because their van's almost out of gas. So anyway, they could have changed the synopsis a little bit. The Texas Chainsaw stars Marilyn Burns as Sally. Alan Danziger as Jerry, Paul A. Partain as Franklin, William Vale as Kirk, Terry McMinn as Pam, Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface, Edwin Neal as Hitchhiker, and Jim Sido or Cito as Old Man slash Cook. The Texas Chainsaw was released October 11th, 1974. It was directed by Toby Hooper, produced by Toby Hooper, written by Kim Henkel and Toby Hooter, has an R rating. A runtime of one hour and 23 minutes falls only under the horror genre. And the tagline, which on IMDb says it's just on the UK video, is the idyllic summer's day that became a nightmare of fear and blood. The IMDb rating is a 7.4 out of 10, an 89% on the tomato meter, and an 82% audience score on Rotten Tomatoes. So... I don't know if anyone else has seen the Texture Chainsaw again because it's very fresh in my head. I wanted to go go back and watch it for two things. One was I wanted to have a fresh memory of it for this episode, and the second thing was the Texas Chainsaw game that is coming out on the 18th is in, is based only off this movie. So I've been reading things from critics, hearing things from critics about the attention to detail, and Gun is the same one that did Friday the Thirteenth franchise or Friday the Thirteenth video game which sadly is going to be going away, which we've said. But the attention to detail on that with the music and the cabins and the houses were amazing. So I really, really wanted to go back and 
have an appreciation for what I'm going to be playing based off this iconic beginning um, entry of the Texas Chainsaw. So that I, I don't even I don't even have words for the Texas Chainsaw. It's if you've seen the movies, there's something very different about them than a Nightmare on Elm Street or Halloween or Friday, even Friday the Thirteenth, which is so so brutal. There's something completely different about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and I think it's because it's not even just Leatherface. And Leatherface is like, how do I say it? He's not all there mentally, and I don't mean just crazed. Like, he's kind of handicapped and just um, or looks like an inbred killing machine. And it's the family members that are even more psychotic because Leatherface isn't even that much psychotic as he is just following orders of the family to do certain things. Obviously, yes, he likes to wear the faces of his victims. That's why they call him Leatherface and that, you know, that's what he has on. But it's the other family members to me that are just even more unhinged. Like that's the element of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre that I think really ties me into it is it's like a sense of dread and hopelessness and like you are in the middle of nowhere in texas and the movies always do this amazing feeling of like you feel the heat and you feel the the thickness in the air and the restlessness and the hopelessness that's going on to these characters and you don't know who they're going to come across that's actually involved or someone that can maybe really help these people and that's kind of what happens in all these entries but the, the original one is even just it does it so well but before we get into everything that I like about it, we're going to get into what everyone else loved about it and what they hated about it and what we like to do on the show as the top three best and worst reviews of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on IMDb. We're going to do the top three first. Coming in with a 10 out of 10 written in October of 2020. It's titled The Greatest Film of All Time. It says, I don't have much to say other than this. This is the greatest film of all time. Tell me one thing wrong with this movie other than the constant screaming at the end and horror cliches. The constant screaming makes it feel more real and you can't say a thing about horror cliches because this movie made those cliches. It is a very rare that the beginning of a horror subgenre is actually good. In parentheses, this is Blair Witch, for example. But this movie is an outlier. We wouldn't have this slasher genre without Toby Hooper. I was unsure with how this was a 10 out of 10 review and then not because I thought it was going into something bad. I'm like, maybe I read this wrong where it says, tell me something wrong other than the constant screaming at the end and the horror cliches, but that justified why there is. So maybe this person has heard people say something about the screaming and horror cliches. Um, but I picked this review for the simple fact that the last sentence, we wouldn't have the slasher genre without Toby Hooper. I all almost a hundred percent agree. Like people like to credit Halloween as the beginning. And a lot of people tried to remake it and they did. A lot of people did because it was a different kind of slasher, but there's a real thing here that the Texas Chainsaw Massacre was first 1974. Four years later was when Halloween was out. So this really did Toby Hooper, Open the door for the slasher genre, and I completely agree. Moving on to the second best review. It's titled, Among One of the Greatest Horrors Ever. This was written in June 2019. Here we go. So creepy, gory, and authentic. Even scarier that it can all happen. A true masterpiece that I have seen at least 10 or 15 times. I even had a chance to meet Leatherface, Gunnar Hansen, a few years ago. I was so bummed when he passed away from cancer and regret not doing more that day at an event called Mad Monster Party. Regardless of that stuff, this movie is legendary and sticks with you. I honestly think the guy in the wheelchair is the most annoying one, and I'm and I'm happy with everything that happens with him or otherwise. Excuse me. <clears throat> I agree. The, the, the thing that got me on this one was where to go. I lost it already. Oh my god, so creepy, gory, and authentic. I didn't see a lot of gore. I didn't think it was very gory, but definitely so scary that it could all happen. That's the thing, is that it's about a family of cannibals 
who hunt and kill humans that are stranded in Texas or not stranded or end up across their path or whatever the case may be and torture and kill and eat them. It's not far fetched. It could definitely happen. And I think that's, what's terrifying. One of the reasons I picked this and, you know, rest in peace to Gunnar Hansen. Um, really cool that this person got to meet him and I'm not <laughs> the guy the, the when they say I think the guy in the wheelchair is most annoying and one that they're happy that happens to him they're speaking of Sally's brother Franklin and if you watch the beginning of the text chase on Metro, it has the iconic the film in which you are about to w- watch or whatever it says it says Sally and her invalid brother so like obviously he was annoying because he was supposed to be in a sense of like he wasn't all there. Um, so I wasn't happy that he, I, I wasn't happy that he, what happened to him that way, but I get what they're saying. He kind of, he can, he, he can push your buttons, but I think that was the point. And you could see Sally being a sister and being just very annoyed with him, but also the love she had for him because she still ends up doing things for him anyway. Moving on to the last best review. It is titled, Yet Another Classic of the Horror Genre. This was written in October of 2011. It says, There has been a time that I wasn't really that fond of horror films, finding some had cheap, excessive gore, bad acting, and scripting, and a lack of genuine thrills and suspense. I couldn't have been more wrong. Some of the best of the genres are anything but this. But these. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of the best. It screams horror classic from the character Leatherface to the many times it's been imitated and parodied, but never equaled. I think the difference to me... Hold on. I think the use of the documentary-style realism is masterful, and the fact that it is low-budget makes no difference to me. Sorry for that. In fact, to me, this adds to the gritty, harsh, and creepy tone this film conveys. The gore is not all at all excessive. In fact, its count is quite low, and when it is used, Hooper's direction is probably the Texas Chainsaw Massacre's strongest asset. I was fine with the acting as well. Leatherface is genuinely unnerving. In conclusion, a classic. 10 out of 10. This goddamn review is like all over the place, so I apologize for the like stumbling. But I picked it because I liked that they began saying that I wasn't that fond of horror films, so... It's cool when things like that, you see these people that aren't really fans of horror start to find like a, a classic like this and, and be able to appreciate all of it. And this was, like I said, remember, this was written in 2011. So this is so many years, decades after the original, after this was filmed and they they became fans. So many movies at this point already came out. Even the four, there were four screams, there were 10 Jasons, there were so many different slashers that this one got her or the, him or them. So I thought that was really cool. And I agree that Leatherface um, is unnerving, very much so. He is. And the documentary style is is pretty cool. So I really thought this was a great review and that they did. I thought it was cool that they became a fan of the horror genre just for the Texas Chainsaw mostly. So that concludes the top three best reviews of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on IMDb. We're going to move on to the top three worst reviews on IMDb for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. These are always fun. Coming in number one, it's titled Shockingly Bad. This is written in March 2005. An awful plot and terrible acting. Most of the film appears to be of a girl screaming while being chased by a man swinging a chainsaw around his head like a safari park chimp. Perhaps it could be argued that this film led the way for many teen slasher flicks that followed. However, most teen slasher flicks aren't actually all that good. Considerably better than this tripe, though. I would suspect that this film was made by college students as a project or to try and waste tape. Probably the latter. Too obvious for a thriller and too tame for a horror. If you're looking for scares, look elsewhere. Um, oh god, where do I begin? Uh, awful plot, terrible acting. Most of the film appears to be of a girl screaming while being chased by a man swinging a chainsaw. Yes, that is the point. She's being terrorized by... It's called The Texas Chainsaw. Um, It did lead the way for many teen slasher flicks, but obviously you said that they actually aren't that good, so why'd you watch this one? 
again, we, we, we're not even going to dive into that. I like that they tried, they, they made this film just to waste tape. Like it expires or something. Like, you know, we had to hurry up and use this tape, guys. So, you know what? Why don't we just get a chainsaw? A whole setting, actors and everything. Let's just make a movie because we got to get rid of the tape, guys. Got to get rid of this tape. It's like seven days. Pass it on to the next person. <laughs> Makes no sense. That wasn't even a good, like, insult. You could have came up with something better. You could have come up with something better. We've heard better. We've heard better. And then my favorite part of this is too tame for a horror. What the fuck? Did you watch the movie? There's nothing tame about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. This this movie and all of the sequels, good or bad, can be said a lot of things about them to describe them. But tame is never one of them. There's nothing tame about any of them, especially the first one. There's nothing tame about these movies. Everything about that review is just incorrect. <clears throat> Moving on to the next one. It's titled, One of the Worst Movies I've Ever Seen in My Life, written in November of 2018. This is so short, but I needed this. You'll know why. Ready? Here we go. This movie does not have anything good. Bad actors, pathetic script, mediocre direction, horrible soundtrack, poor dialogues, generic scenario, ugly photography, unbelievable characters, exaggerated reactions, tense, repetitive, agonizing, Badly done and boring. That is the review. My God, like, wow, they fucking hated this movie. They hated the fuck out of this movie. But I picked it because of one description. Exaggerated reactions. I'm sorry. How are they supposed to react? I don't think it was exaggerated. In fact, I think it was so well portrayed. Because that's how the fuck I would react. If I was Sally. A hundred percent. I don't see anything exaggerated about that terrorizing night that she went through. At all. So I'm not sure why you're calling it that. And that's it for that review. It's so short. I just really want to talk about that. So it's time to do the final worst review for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Titled, Appalling Horror. And this is written in September of 2013. Toby Hooper became famous for this shocker about five friends driving their van in the country who pick up a bizarre hitchhiker, which leads them to a seemingly abandoned house where a nightmare awaits them all. Though an undeniable cult classic, I found this to be an appalling piece of cinema on every conceivable level. Brutally violent, sadistic, and ugly film tries to create a claustrophobic atmosphere, but instead makes it all so unsavory and nihilistic that it remains a disturbingly joyless experience. Yet, some people find a chainsaw-wielding maniac entertaining. Okay. <sighs> Heavy breathing. Insert sigh. Okay. Here's the problem. It's an undeniable cult classic. I don't know. Yes, it's supposed to be. Everything that you're saying is wrong with it. It's supposed to be brutally violent and sadistic. It is supposed to... No, it's a, a a disturbingly joyless experience you think is a dig, but it is a fucking compliment to the creators of this movie because nothing about this movie did they make it a fucking – to make it a joyous experience. It's supposed to invoke extreme terror and uncomfortableness. You're not supposed to have a joy in watching this. It's not fucking Miracle on 34th Street, okay? It's not your fucking rom-coms that you have a happy ending. There's nothing that was meant to be joyous about the fucking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Dear person, you missed the entire fucking mark on this. You had no idea. Don't watch horror movies. If you're looking to find joy in them, what the fuck? <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm done with this review. That concludes the top three best and worst reviews for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre on IMDb. I need to take a sip of this goddamn soda. Hold on. Because that was too much. Okay. 
So let's get on to what I liked the most about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Having just watched it yesterday before recording this, the thing that I always liked the most about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is the scene at the dinner table. It with Sally when she wakes up and she's tied up and it's Sally, Leatherface, uh, the cook, the hitchhiker, and Grandpa, who Grandpa is so fucking creepy. Like, he looks dead, but he's not dead. But the scene there is so terrifying and uncomfortable. Like, it's just, the house is so crazy. They have body parts and bones everywhere. It's just so, so terrifying. Like, you know she's never going to get out of there. It's You know that this isn't going to end well. There's no hope. How she, like, what are they going to do? It's just terrifying. And they, they do this scene a couple times in the movies, but they didn't do it in the remake. The, the remake, I felt, with the family aspect, was a little bit tamed down aside from the sheriff. Like, I want the whole family in this when I see the Texas Chainsaw. Like, that's what I think of. I think that that's what I like the most is that the, they weren't afraid to take it to that level. And really, like, with the grandpa trying to, like, hit her with the hammer and, like, the holding her over the... Oh, my God. Just terrifying. Terrifying. That's what I think I like the most about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. What I liked the least about the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is I feel the story was a little unfinished. Like they had certain things fleshed out, like why the teens were driving, but they didn't understand. I didn't understand why they, because they were out there, they wanted to go back to the house they grew up in, but it was also abandoned. We didn't understand why. Um, There was the ending where like it wasn't complete, like Sally got away, but we don't know anything else. Which is also fine. We don't need everything, but I'm thinking of like, for me, I would have liked some kind of like police trying to go back, kind of like how they did in the remake. I liked that ending a little bit, but yeah, I, thinking back, like that's what I I felt like there were aspects of the story that were missing pieces that I think we could have fleshed out a little bit better, just to have a more complete story. But now it's time. To go back and answer this week's terrifying trivia question. So as a refresher, this week's terrifying trivia question is... What does Kirk find on the porch and give to Pam? And the answer is a human tooth. He found a human tooth, he picked it up, he knew it was a tooth, and then he gave it to her because he thought it was funny, and she freaked out and went on to the to the swing in the yard. Let me just say this. I ain't picking up no human tooth and think, I mean, boys will be boys, I guess, whatever. But it just was, like, you didn't find that weird, like somebody lost a tooth and left it on the porch. I probably wouldn't think like murderers right away, but like still, why are you picking up somebody's, something's tooth? It's bad enough it was an animal tooth, but you picked up a human tooth. It's clearly a human tooth. Ugh. Anyway, shout out to like the infamous like Kirk going in and Leatherface coming around the corner and bashing him in the head with a fucking sledgehammer or the little sledgehammer and then shutting that steel door. That's just so iconic. So we're speaking of like deaths. It's time to reveal the number of kills in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Texas Chainsaw Massacre has a whopping five kills in the movie. It's not a lot. For a slasher. But it's enough because. It had. One survivor. So five teens. One survivor. So four of them were killed. And one of the family members were killed. So Leatherface and the cook survived. We never know what happened to them. In the end of the original. But there are sequels. But the sequels are kind of weird. Like what took place. And how whatever happened. But anyway. Just five. And that. Source comes from my brain. (laughs) But we've reached the point in the show where it's time to give my final rating and review of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre So obviously it's not even a surprise. The rating system for this week is going to be chainsaws. 
I give the Texas Chainsaw Massacre a rating of 7 out of 10 chainsaws. And here is my final review. Before Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, and Freddy Krueger, we got Leatherface and his family of crazed cannibals. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre creates the perfect environment of fear, panic, and pure hopelessness that many other horror movies cannot achieve. The late great Marilyn Burns gave an uncomfortable and realistic performance of a woman being terrorized by a family of maniacs. There's an essence here that many of the sequels are missing. The sound of a chainsaw will never be the same. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is available to stream now on Peacock. And that concludes this week's episode. Thank you so much for joining me on this spooky Sunday. Don't forget to rate and review wherever you're listening. And follow me on all the social channels and head on over to the website, theharwithme.com, to find all the ways to stay connected. Stay safe, everyone, and stay spooky. Bye. Thanks again for joining me on this week's episode of The Horror Within Me. If you enjoyed this episode, please rate and review wherever you listen to your podcast. And for even more Horror Within Me content, visit my link tree at l-i-n-k-t-r dot e-e slash horror within me for links to the website, my Patreon, and all of my social channels to stay up to date on all the spooky stuff that we're doing. So be safe. And until next time, stay spooky.